hello viewers welcome back to the course on scientific computing using matlab so today we are going to discuss the lecture 24 so in the previous lecture we have discussed the direct methods like gauss elimination lu decomposition and other one so today we will discuss the iterative methods for solving a system of equations so <coughs> iterative methods. So, I have a system of equation that is n cross n system. And I want to solve this one with the help of iterative methods. So, for example, so I start with the first one is the Jacobi method or we also call it gauss jacobi method. So, what we are going to do in this case, like I told you that this is a iterative method. So, suppose I have a system of equation. So, a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 a 1 n x n is equal to b 1, 2n x n is equal to b 2 and in the last I have b n. So, this is my system equation. So, in this case, I will reduce this matrix in such a way that I can write a code for that one and with the help of the initial condition, I should be able to find the solution. So, what I do in this case, first I will concentrate on the, the first row. So, in the first row what I will do, I will just keep the term this one and I am taking all the other terms of this system on the right hand side. So, I will write this one as x 1 can be written as b 1 minus a 1 2 x 2 a 1 n x n and then what I do? I will divide this by a 1 1 provided my a 1 1 is not equal to 0. So, that is my condition because if it is a 1 1 is there and that is 0, then we interchange the rows. So, in this case my a 1 1 should not be 0. So, this can be written as b 1 minus summation a 1 j x j, j is from 2 to n and j is not equal to 1. So, I am finding this one. divided by a 1 1. So, that is my x 1. Now, the same way from the second uh, uh, row. So, this is the my second row. So, I will rewrite the second row at the same way and from there I will take the element x 2 and then I will take b 2 minus a 2 1 x 1 plus a 2 2 is already there. So, a 2 3 x 3 and so on a 2 n x n and then I am dividing it by a 2 2. So, in this case also I am considering that a 2 2 is not equal to 0. In fact, it should not be very small number because if we divide it with a very small number then we may lose the significant digits. So, this one can be written as b 2. minus summation a 2 j x j where j is moving from 1 to n and j is not equal to 2. So, the same way I can write here in this also I can put the same condition 
j is moving from 1 to n and in this case j is not equal to 1. So, j is not equal to 2 and then I will write and I will divide by a to 2. So, the same way I can go keep going and in the last line in the last equation I can write as a b n summation a n j x j where j is from moving from 1 to n and j is not equal to n and then I am dividing by a n n a n n is not equal to j. So, in this case if you combine all these equations together you will see that you will get my x 1 is b 1 minus a 1 to x 2 a 1 and x n divided by a 1 1. So, this is a x 1, x 2 is b 2 minus a 2 1 x 1, a 2 n x n divided by a 2 2 and in the last I will write it as x n is equal to b n minus a n 1 x 1 and a n n minus 1 x n minus 1 divided by a n n. Now, if uh, this is the system I am getting. So, from here Now, I know that in the, in, the, in the iterative process, I want that this is my iterative process. So, suppose I take a capital X. So, capital X is a column vector representing x 1, x 2, x n. So, suppose this is my exact solution. So, in this case, I want that for the iterative process, for the iterative process I want that my x k plus 1 iteration is equal to some matrix H and then it should be equal to x k. It means that is the iteration the solution I am getting at the kth iteration then I will multiply it because from here I can see that this is the system we are going to get. So, I will multiply by the sum system and I will get the new approximation of this one. And now, from here I can define the term x k plus 1 minus x k. So, that is the difference between x k plus 1 iteration minus x k iteration. So, if you see from here it can be written as I have a x 1 k plus 1 up to x n k plus 1. So, this is one of the vector minus the another vector. So, x 1 k. So, this is the difference between the two vectors. So, I can write this as a x 1 k plus 1 minus x 1 k and so on x n k plus 1 minus x n k. So, this is I am getting the another vector and that is the component wise difference I am finding between the kth approximation and the k plus 1th approximation. Now, so from the above this one I can write my system. So, this is my I can write a 2. So, from here I can write my uh, system as so 2 can be written as x 1 
k plus 1 can be written as b1. So, there is no change in b1. Now, what I do is that I take 1 to x to k plus a 1 3 x 3 k and the last I will get a 1 and x n k and then I divide it by a 1 1. So, that is my first equation. Second equation would be same as this one b 2 minus a 2 1 x 1 k plus a 2 3 x 3 k and a 2 n x n k and then I am dividing it by a 2 2 and in the last I will get x n k plus 1 is equal to b n minus a n 1 x 1 k a n 2 x 2 k and in the last I will get a n n minus 1 x n minus 1 k and then I am dividing the whole by a n n. So, this is my system. Now, how to start? How to start? So, how to start means first I will choose, first we start with initial approximation. So, in this case I will start with x 0. So, I should write it is a capital X 0. So, capital X 0 means I am having the x 1 0, x 2 0 and x n 0. So, this value I have to choose. So, I can start with any number. So, maybe suppose I take uh, x naught is equal to maybe I will take 0, 0, 0, all 0 or I can take my x 0 is equal to 1, 1, 1, all 1. So, any number I can start with. So, this is my initial approximation and then what I will do is that I will put this value here and I will find the new value of x 1. So, from here, so this is my iterative process. So, from iterative process 3, we will input x naught and and we get x 1. So, this is my x 1 I will get. Then I will input and I will give I will get x 2 as output and keep going. So, it means that I am I am going to input. So, we are going to input x k and getting x k plus 1 approximation. Now, the question is how to how to stop. So, in this case we will find out the error. So, error how will finding out? So, I just now just I told you that the difference between x naught and x k plus 1 and x k. So, in this case what I will do is I will find out x k plus 1 minus x k. So, this difference I will find and if you will see that this difference is again a vector. So, this is again a vector. So, what I will do that after getting this value I will take this is a vector. So, I will take L to norm. L to norm means then what I will do that it is the same as the Euclidean norm. So, this is a vector. So, then I will do x 1 k plus 1 minus x 
1 k square plus x 2 k plus 1 minus x 2 k square and so on x n k plus 1 minus x n k square and then under the root. So, this is called the L2 norm or maybe in other books we can also take error as L1 norm or L1 norm means that I am taking x1 k plus 1 minus x1 k modulus x2 k plus 1 minus x2 k. So, I am taking all the modulus. x n k. So, this is my L 1 norm. So, from here you will see that I am getting a number from here a unique number. So, this is a, a real number I am getting this is a real number. So, from here what I will do I will take this error and if this error is I will define the tolerance or the accuracy. So, I will define the tolerance. So, this tolerance is suppose I am giving half into 10 raise to power minus 4. So, it is 0 0.0005. So, this one from here I am getting suppose I am taking this tolerance and then I am just writing this one because I am taking it. So, it is 0 0.5 into 10 raise to power minus 4 and if I take this one as, so it will give you 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, So, that is my tolerance. So, I am getting this tolerance and then I will find out my error and if error is greater than tolerance then continue. And if the error becomes less than tolerance, then we stop. So, it depends upon that how much accuracy you needed, you are interested in. If you want more number of steps, then suppose I take tolerance is equal to half into 10 raised to power minus 5. So, in this case, the number of steps may increase. So, it all depends upon that how much accuracy is needed. So, based on the accuracy, we will do the iteration process and with each iteration my approximation will be better as compared to the previous one. If the system is going to converge and then within the number of iterations, we will be able to find our solution with the accuracy whatever we have defined. So, this accuracy is is needed or is achieved with the number of iterations. So, that is uh, the way we can stop the uh, method that is called the Jacobi method. Now, the thing is that <coughs> in the Jacobi method, we have seen that that all the diagonal elements. So, whatever the diagonal elements we have defined this diagonal element, this diagonal all the diagonal elements. So, that should be non-zero. So, we know that all the diagonal elements of the matrix of the system A x is equal to B matrix A should be non-zero or should not be small. Because we know that division by a small number is avoided, we should avoid that one. So, in this case, what you will do that? So, this so to eliminate this type of possibility, we want that our matrix A, so whatever the matrix we are choosing should be diagonally dominant.
So, the same condition was needed when we were dealing with the Gauss elimination process or the LU decomposition process. So, in that case also the diagonal dominant matrix was needed. So, this is and we know that this is a sufficient condition. sufficient condition. So, from here we can say that if, if the matrix A is diagonal dominant then, then the Jacobi process is is going to converge. So, in this case we do not know that if the matrix is not diagonal dominant then what will happen whether it is going to converge or not. So, that is a necessary condition, but sufficient condition is that if A is diagonal dominant matrix then definitely the Jacobi process is going to converge and we are going to get the approximate solution. If, if so, this is the if condition, if the matrix A is not diagonal dominant, so if it is this matrix is not diagonal dominant, then we we interchange the rows to make it diagonal dominant. So, what do we do that? We interchange the rows as we have done in the partial poverty. So, we do the interchanging of the rows and with the interchanging of the rows then it may happen that we will get the diagonal dominant matrix. So, that is the sufficient condition for the Jacobi method. So, in the uh, for example, I have a system like uh, 2.3 x 1 plus 0.5 x 2 plus 1.2 x 3 is equal to some b 1. 4.5 then then i will get x1 1.5 plus x2 minus 2.3 x3 is equal to 2.5 then 0.5 x1 plus x2 and that's it and then this is equal to 0 suppose I take this one. So, in this case if you see from here then the first row is ok, it uh, looks like a diagonal dominant. So, how we can check? So, from here I can check that 2.3 is greater than 0 0.5 plus 1.2. So, that is ok. What about the second one? Second one is this is 1 because this coefficient and this is 1.5 plus 2.3. So, this is less than this one and the third one is the, the element is 0. So, here it is 0. So, in this case this value is definitely less than 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1. So, in this case I can say that the whole matrix is not diagonal dominant. So, in this case I, I cannot apply the Jacobi method. Now, if I want to do apply the Jacobi method what I will do is that. So, if I take this matrix and I, I apply my uh, Gauss Jacobi method then the method will not converge. So, what I do that I will interchange this way. So, in this case uh, maybe I will take this is ok. Now, I can interchange this one. So, I will take it. 
0 0.5 x 1 x 2 and then 0 x 3. So, this is equal to 0 and the next is 1.5 x 1 plus x 2 plus 2.3 x 3 is equal to 2.5. So, in this case what is happening? This is ok. Now, in this case I will see that now this is my uh, diagonal elements. So, from here I can say that 1 is greater than 0 0.5. From here I can say that 2.3 is greater than 1.5 plus 1. So, it is uh, not greater So, it is uh, in fact, so I can maybe just to make this diagonal dominant, I will 1.5 and 1. So, maybe I just change little bit or I can uh, should I change this one or if I take the same one. So, this is is less than this one. So, this matrix is not diagonal dominant. But in this case, if I change little value here, because this is just a random value I have taken. So, if I take the some small value, instead of this one I change the value to maybe I can take here 0.5. And then in this case I can say that ok. So, if I change this one now, so my this will become now 2.3 is greater than 1.5 plus 0.5. Then I can say that this matrix is diagonal dominant. So, it is not always possible that we will find the diagonal dominant after interchanging the row like we have seen here. But if we it is possible to make them the system diagonal dominant then and then we apply the Jacobi method then we are sure that our Jacobi method is going to converge and is going to give the solution. So, this is a, we should stop here and this is all about the Gauss Jacobi method. So, in the next class we will go further from this. Uh, so, thanks for viewing this uh, thanks very much.